I, I, I was so unhappy when Designers Republic were making money. Not because we were making money, but the kind of stuff that you have to do. And, and it suits some people. And it's not, you know, it's not saying, like, oh, making money is bad or, or you know, sort of licking the client's arse or sucking Satan's cock or all the other things you need to do to make money. You know, but, but, but you know, there, there are some people for whom that's more important and they use their creative skills to make money uh, for whatever they want to do with it, whether it be just as a, as a wage or, or as wanting, wanting to build a business. Mm. I never wanted to build an empire and I always wanted to keep it small. And then it just happened to be that I kind of, I was seduced by a bad lot. Well, I, and basically someone just said to me, just in passing, someone said, have you, you know, have you ever thought of an exit plan? And I didn't really know, I, I thought they were talking about suicide. I didn't know what they were talking about. <laughs> And they sort of said, you know, do you know how much Designers Republic's worth? This was before I went bust, obviously. And I was like, I, it hadn't occurred to me. And they said, well, you know, do you want to be doing this for the rest of your life? And I was like, yeah. I don't, I don't really know what else mm. to do. I, I just get distracted because when you see people going in that toilet, you must... I don't, anyway. Um, Please don't go to the toilet. So if you're going to go to... You might as well just do it out there because I can see it anyway. Um, that's in six hours' time when we're all naked and the whole room's a sound to pay. Three hours, Chris. Oh, three hours? <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, so we better speed things up so you and I get... Yeah, yeah, they, also, they always say that to me. I don't know what it... What it um, um, no, I've got forgot what we're talking about again. It was something to do with... It was before the toilets. It was, yeah. Oh, it's about... It, yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's that whole thing about money. It's just... We... Th the whole business thing, just, we, used to, we used to just have like meetings about having meetings. You know, and I realised that, it, that that was just so that the people that were there to have meetings were justifying their, their role. And I didn't really need to be there, you know. And, 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 and then they kind of, you know, then because they need to kind of, they want to make their bonuses, they're kind of try, trying to push Designers Republic, you know, in a, in a direction where, you know, to, to be honest, it was, it was probably beneficial for me not to be in front of the client because we're talking to clients who I kind of didn't really have a lot of time for. Mm. As, not as people, but just as clients, you know, just like, you know. That's one of the things that's been, that's been in my mind over the last few weeks, because some of the work that you've, you've got up here is work that I know really, really well, the, the age of chance stuff that, you, that you've got up, which is a really unique style, I remember the first time. It's great, isn't it? It it's really is. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's really yeah. beautiful. What are you laughing for? Age of Chance is beautiful, it's beautiful. It is. And I just wondered what, what connection you need to have, or needed to have then, and whether it's any different now. You need to have to the music or to the, to the people that were, that were bringing the music to you for you to, to essentially house. Uh, I rarely listen to the music okay. first, um, and the main reason for that is, you know, it's not like, oh, I can't work that way, my, you know, or whatever. It's just that <clears throat> I am a consumer at heart, and when people give us like demo tape, they say these these aren't really mixed yet, but you can get a rough idea of what we're up to. Mm. Um, you know. I'm more interested. The, the, thing that, the thing that interests me is why people... The thing that interests me in general is why people do what they do. That's, that's everything. And when you work with a client, especially if it's a, 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 a band, which is uh, quite often another creative mm, yeah. unit, quite often, um, then it's, there's, there's, a, there's an added level for one creative to understand what another creative is doing and why. So the thing that, that interests me is really... Um, why, why, why have they chosen to make the album? Why have they done what they've done? What are the influences? Where are they coming from? Mm -hmm. And then to find some common ground that, that I can then work from. So actually you, 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 you're effectively working in parallel mm. to what they're doing. So I, I, I don't really find any... Uh, there's not much point, but I certainly don't find any sort of pleasure in in trying to represent mm. the music visually. And I'm, and I'm only really interested, um, as I think all designers should be, but I'm only really interested in, in, in what I like and what I want to do 
and why I want to do it. And, and so the skill that I have to learn or had to learn and, and try to kind of maintain is, is how, you can, how you can take those ideas and dovetail them with, with the client. So, that, mm. so it, it genuinely is something for them. It's not like trying to fool them into having something they don't really want, you know. It, 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 it's, so it's important to me that I kind of solve the problem, that I do the job and, and answer the brief. But it's important to me that I, that I do it in the, way that I, in the way that I want to do it because I think it's important that, that any designer st stamps their own mark on what they do. Otherwise, anybody could do it. Mm. So, but not everybody thinks that. So, I, so quite often, I, I know, I, I look at bigger agencies <laughs> who really... Uh, treading carefully looking at bigger agencies who, who quite often uh, are really there as, as a service industry for clients mm. and so it's, it's what the account execs and managers or whatever they're called uh, what they do and they, they kind of sort all that out with the client and they come back and then they brief into studio mm. and that to me is a, com a complete anathema I don't our, our designer Maybe I've just had the wrong account execs. I didn't, which I didn't want them in the first place, but you know, that's a long story. But anyway, um, <laughs> sometimes you catch things that you weren't thinking of getting. But, you know. and, uh, I've noticed these two guys over here <laughs> smiling and laughing at us. They weren't me, got it, Rim. <laughs> Are you on a, for a former account manager? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you were all right, it's just the others. Uh, <laughs> But no, but in general, so it's not really, it's not, it's, if you've got a, if you've got a, a if you've got a, a, a nominally designed or creative business who, whose job is to service the, the wants of the client in, term of, in terms of campaign and all mm -hmm. things like that, and where actually, you know, I, I, I mean, I was really shocked when I first used to go and sort of, you know, had dealings with bigger, um, with like you know, with bigger kind of clients, and you go and see these sort of agencies where, you know, there's like fifteen account execs and then two designers shoved in a back room, you know, who just basically have to do what they're what they're told to do. <laughs> Was that you? One of the designers <laughs> trying to get out of that back room. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, where, where 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 am I? Who else am I making enemies with? Right, yeah, yeah. Um, Have you made a lot of enemies? I don't know, no, no, one's told, no one's had the balls to tell me yet. But I, really? But I, but I kind of, you know, year on year, our, our, our parties get sort of like more and more sparse. So I guess I, <laughs> I'm doing something right. Um, I don't know. I, I doesn't, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't particularly... Um, I don't really think about, about that, really. I don't, you know... I, I, I guess I'm of the opinion that if someone doesn't particularly like me, then I don't particularly like them. So it doesn't really matter, you know. Mm. Yeah, I like... <laughs> <Actually, yeah. laughs> <laughs> so all mic'd up in there, you know. <laughs> so just going back to, you know, the, the original question. What was that? It's about the relationship. So, you know, so the edge of chance. Stuff, oh, yeah, right? when, yeah. When you did that, you know, because, you know, yeah. Relationship to the age of chance. Yeah, I bought their best-selling single of uh, I think it was what year was it when Kiss came out? <coughs> Kiss EP. Eighty eighty-six wasn't it? Eighty-six. It's the biggest-selling twelve-inch single independently of that year, and I liked that record a lot. And I loved the artwork. Yeah. When you were talking about that creative process, it's two individuals or two groups yeah. of individuals creating that. Did you have any connect? Did, did, were you talking to those and, and having discourse? Yeah. With them? yeah, I mean, I think that we'd, we'd done a few, I'd, I'd done a few things before meeting up with Age of Chance. We did uh, an album for a band called Chack, who, who, whose who's, uh, record deal with um, MCA effectively set up Fon mm. Studios and then yeah. Fon Records, which Age of Chance signed to. Um, and I'd also managed this band called Person to Person. Um, and if anybody says they remember them, you're lying. Mm. Uh, but they, they were ex-ABC. Uh, they, they were one of those bands that, uh, that uh, was guilty of being 
um, a pop band that wasn't popular. Um, and, you know, and it was a very brief period of my life. But, but I learned a lot because then we signed to Epic Records and that's how I got into the music industry through that. Um, but uh, I'm, just try, I'm just trying to think of... So when that, with Age of Chance, when, that, when, that, when, when we sort of met, that it, was, it, was, it was good because there was a sort of sense that there was finally some people that, that thought along the same lines. I've got a fly here. It is, yeah, yeah, it's, it's I knew I, should, I was going to have a shower before I came out, but I thought, fuck it. And <laughs> now I'm living to... It's followed you all the way up. It has, hasn't it? From the uh, Ibis. <laughs> it's, it's, it's called Ibis. The fly is called Ibis. <laughs> and... Um, True story. The um, yeah, so so yeah, so it had a chance. You know, not just because Neil's here, or, but um, but it was it was really good. There was a, there was a real sort of sense that that um, that that there were sort of people that really sort of thought in a similar kind of way, you know, and and they kind of came in with like sort of you know sort of a, I can't remember. This is you know kind of what happened. Um, it was all my idea. It was kind of what happened, but but the, but but the truth is that um, they came in with like lots of slogans and lots of images that they found, and I think that you know that as I you know I think that as I remember it, that it was like these are kind of influenced things, and can you do mm. sort of something with this? And then I took it quite literally, because I just thought this is like a William Burroughs type thing, mm. where you know it's almost and it's almost like uh, sort of slogan bingo. You know, I was mm. closing your eyes and just like uh, taking all right, okay, that's me closing my eyes. Bingo, um, but you're kind of getting a slogan and then and then, and then an image, mm. and that and that's that's sort of something that kind of you know that I'd learned from you know psychology, you know, being that um, uh, you know that that the, the bra your brain can't help but try to make connections between things that 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 kind of if you put a series of random things in front of somebody that the brain will try to make sense of it because that's what it needs to do otherwise you'd fall over everything mm. you need to make sense of your surroundings and understand. On a very basic level, that kind of if that you if you walk into that, you'll hurt your leg and you'll, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll trip over, and so it, so it's, it seemed to me it'd be the same thing if you were doing that with like sort of seemingly random images and, and slogans that, that if you put that in front of people in a totally sort of you know it was a very random you know it's kind of, and it's quite good because it was obviously sort of you know BC before computers, so it was like the um, you know you literally sort of. You stick in. Uh, you, you've heard that one before. What you laughing at? <laughs> but it's um, a winner, isn't it? It's it is. It is a winner. Keep it's a winner every time. It's. Uh, it probably gets almost as many laughs when I do talks as, as if it's not going well at a talk, and people just sort of you know. It's a bit like you look out into the audience. It's a bit like telling a dog a joke. People are just like looking at you like that. You only, especially if it's students, you just have to go like anyway. So fuck that. And then suddenly he's like, he's really good. He's really good. He <laughs> swears. It's fantastic.